this is the case of liver abscess you can see that the abscess is seen all over here in the right lobe of the liver and this is the gallbladder is seen in the uh, occasional view and you see the whole abscess this is a whole whole is abscess the necrotic material all around extending from the posterior surface to the anterior surface of the liver and it is the right lobe of the liver and the, and the whole uh, the same parenchyma has been necrosed by the liver abscess and a huge liver abscess when we try to measure this abscess we found that the abscess is about 10 centimeters in one plane and 10 centimeters in another plane and 8 centimeters in third plane and the volume of the abscess was 500 ml nearly the 500 ml of volume and uh, you can see that uh, another it was uh, another measurement was done it was found to be 640 ml and you can see that uh, the liver is uh, liver parenchyma is hypoechoic and the gallbladder walls are thickened and edematous which suggests that this is a uh, there is some hepatitis element going on in the liver along with the liver abscess and the um, uh, spleen was also enlarged and this was 125 millimeters in uh, one plane and this patient was uh, put on uh, this patient was later on uh, put on intercostal tube drainage let us see what happened after the intercostal tube drainage this is the scan of the liver, uh, scan of the patient, same patient uh, who was put on uh, intercostal uh, on the liver aspiration tube for about one and a half months and despite the fluid being drained, the necrotic material in the liver persisted and you can see that the size of the liver abscess is increased to nearly uh, 1910 ml and, the, uh, and now it is occupying the whole of the liver nearly and you can see that the liver uh, abscess is there and the necrotic material is also there but the fluid which was uh, there in the liver uh, parenchyma along with the necrotic material seems to have been drained but the spleen remains normal in size and uh, when the patient was on intercostal uh, aspiration or the drainage tube uh, this uh, patient developed a track and from there from the track uh, there was a leakage of uh, contents of the liver abscess all the time and there is a fistula formation we will show you the fistula just now this is the scan of the patient uh, you can see that the intercostal tube uh, has been intercostal aspiration tube has been drained has been removed and uh, the, the you can see the necrotic material moving in the abscess uh, and uh, you can see the flakes of the necrotic material debris and uh, fluid all together uh, into the liver and the size of this uh, liver abscess when we measured was around 2218 ml that uh, despite the intercostal drainage tube for being kept for about a one and a half months the patient continued to have increase in the size of the liver abscess and once the tube was removed this, uh, the, the necrotic material started uh, accumulating rather much more now the whole of the liver has been occupied with the liver abscess this patient was a 55 year old male and he was a diabetic also but the diabetes was getting controlled because the patient was not taking hardly anything he lost a lot of weight and uh, once uh, you can see that uh, this is the track this is the track of the fistula this is where the track uh, the intercostal track can be seen you can see carefully uh, the track uh, kindly show it uh, close up close up close up in the high school you can see that this is the track uh, and from here the necrotic material the Pus was being drained, uh, it is getting drained on its own once the uh, tube was removed and uh, you can see the track being seen on the uh, ultrasound scan. Uh, this track was uh, not healing and the patient was not getting relief, he was losing weight. And with this, uh, this, uh, with this uh, situation in mind, we put the patient on a wide bore intercostal tube drainage and drained about 2.5 liters of nectarotic material and uh, after this uh, drainage uh, the uh, patient started becoming all right uh, once whole of the necrotic material became and was drained the patient started gaining weight his liver became normal he and he comfortably went home after one month this is the case of small liver abscess and uh, you can see that the liver abscess the margins are not very clear it is merging with the liver and surrounding liver tissue but it is present in the posterior superior segment of the liver and once we measured this abscess we found that the liver abscess is measuring around 7 millicentimeters 7 centimeters and 6 centimeters in size and the liver is also not increased much in size 
and the patient presented to us uh, early in the course of labrapsis with the and it could be diagnosed at a, uh, not a very early stage but fairly early stage and uh, this is another spectrum of liver abscess that you see but again you see that the liver abscess is most common in the posterior superior segment of the liver. This is another case of liver abscess again liver abscess seen in the uh, posterior superior segment of the liver and uh, you can see some fluid around here uh, the superior part of the liver which is a reactive fluid in the subdural space or the subpulmonic space and uh, you can see the liver abscess, the necrotic tissue material around this in partial liquefaction. Initially the liver abscess might be solid but as the liquefaction, liquefaction goes, the liquid starts, uh, the fluid starts increasing in size and the necrotic material might float in the liver abscess and later on the, liver, the liquid is absorbed and uh, as the patient becomes alright, there might be a residual abscess only. This abscess was about 615 ml. Large abscess uh, in a patient which is partly liquefied, some necrotic material can be seen. This is the middle stage of the treatment, and uh, this patient is having a large liver abscess in the right lobe of the liver, and the left lobe is nearly normal. And you can see the huge liver abscess, and the kidney is normal. This is the same patient, large liver abscess which is partly liquefied, middle of the treatment. This abscess was around Baras family in size. It requires immediate drainage. I've chosen this case because this liver abscess is not seen in the posterior superior segment or it is seen in the, uh, it is seen in the <coughs> inferior segment. It is seen in the inferior segment because this is the inferior part of the liver, this is the superior part of the liver and you can see that this is an abscess. So be careful that uh, liver, liver abscess can be there in the part. This may be another abscess which was there in this superior segment but only live picture will tell us. This is the live view and there is no abscess here, there is an echo drop there. This is one abscess uh, in the inferior part of the liver and it is likely in the left lobe of the liver, it is likely in the left lobe of the liver because this is the middle hepatic vein which is divided into the right lobe and this is the left lobe. Partially liquefied liver abscess in the left lobe of the liver. This is another case of liver abscess. You can see the liver abscess just below the portal vein in the right lobe. Uh, and it is a small liver abscess and uh, it was found to be uh, around uh, 6 cm to 6 cm in size and uh, it was around, uh, around 100 ml in size. and. Uh, this patient uh, eventually became all right on medical treatment, but did not uh, need to drain it. And this is another good case of liver abscess, which could have been uh, overlooked in case we could have been looking only here. But you can see that there is a decreased equigenicity of the liver, and you can see prominent vessels uh, over here. And edema of the belly tracts instead of uh, acute, hepatitis, acute hepatitis because of liver abscess. This is another case of liver abscess wherein you see that uh, there are two abscesses. One is this abscess, another abscess being seen here, and a third abscess being seen over here. The, the one abscess over here. There are multiple liver abscesses, and all are irregular in shape. And the biggest abscess is in the posterior superior segment. The one here, another here, another here, another here. You can see multiple liver abscesses. This is a case of multiple liver abscesses. And uh, you try to see the same in the other window. You will see that this is some some. Uh, material in the uh, liver abscess, the margins are irregular and uh, it is poorly vascular, it is very poorly vascular, it does not show any vascularity, the, these are the portal circulation, the intrahepatic biliary reticles and the portal veins which are being seen along with the liver and uh, uh, if we measure this abscess, we found that this abscess is around 500 ml in size, this was the largest abscess and the other small abscesses were there. So liver abscess they can have varying pattern but you always try to remember that the liver abscess is generally seen at this posterior superior segment of the liver. Why I am saying the posterior superior segment because once we turn, we, we tilt the posterior towards the back of the patient in the right in the right hypochondrium only then we can see the abscess and this is the, uh, this is the superior part because we are keeping the probe at the inferior part. This is the, this is the first touch with the inferior part and this is the superior part. 
and the liver abscess is generally most commonly seen in the posterior superior segment and you can see that uh, this is the size of the liver abscess and most of the liver abscess you will find that they are in seen in the um, in the posterior superior segment of the liver and this patient became all right uh, with the with the conservative management initially when the liver abscess is there uh, they they can uh, be their solid abscesses but uh, once they are on treatment they become liquefied and the size of the liver abscess might increase but as the uh, time goes on the size starts decreasing so initial increase in the size may not be taken as the increase in the size, increase in the abscess and the most important parameter in the treatment of liver abscess is the clinical improvement in the symptoms of the patient the fever starts going down patient starts feeling better the pain starts becoming less again this is a case of uh, liver abscess uh, you see there are two abscesses joined by this thing uh, this thing uh, that the two liver abscesses in the near body and they seem to be joining each other and third abscess being budding over here and it is a solid abscess right now and uh, it is not that liquefied early patient has come early in the course of disease and as the liver abscess will liquefy will come to more of the clear true picture this is the size of the liver abscess and you can see that the liver uh, the gallbladder is again edematous so which is this suggests that this is a fresh abscess and uh, this uh, this is the evidence of hepatitis, ongoing hepatitis on the case of left lobe liver abscess you can see that the necrotic material over here and this is a multiple liver abscess one here one here but they are all in the left lobe of the liver you can see that they are all in the left lobe of the liver and this is the right lobe of the liver which is apparently normal and uh, they are uh, they residual hepatitis uh, and uh, as you can see with the uh, this is the wall but which is showing the wall or gv wall edema says to hepatitis and you can see some abscesses over here in the left lobe of the liver another case of liver abscess uh, that you see here and you see that the liver abscess this time is in the middle of the liver that is not in the posterior superior segment and this is on the case of liver abscess you see that uh, liver abscess here you see not in the, the, the this is the vein this is a body uh, vein and you see that the liver abscess is there in the middle of the liver somebody might say it is in the left lobe of the liver also but uh, this could be but it is not in the right of the lobe of the liver and you can see that the necrotic material right there and some fluid collection around here what is a, a spherical or ovoid uh, hypoechoic uh, mass uh, with necrotic material inside and it is a mean liver abscess on the case of liver abscess it is a beautifully liquefied liver abscess the hardly any necrotic material can be seen in the liver in the abscess and the only liquefied liver abscess uh, this is one of the it absorbs slowly if we leave it like this and you can see that the liver and the gall bladder we saw that it does not show any edema and so it is a residual liver abscess and so it is also slowly you see there is no edema in the gall bladder and this is a liver abscess but it is uh, pretty big in size around 122 ml in size and uh, we can have a conservative strategy or we can drain it also depending on the patient's preference but this is a huge liver abscess uh, not a very big liver abscess but uh, liquefied liver abscess and the gall bladder does not show any edema so this is a residual liver abscess this is the case of uh, residual liver abscess you can see that there is a small uh, abscess over here which is uh, totally uh, anechoic in uh, nature it does not have any uh, shadows inside and this is a case of uh, there is a residual liver abscess there is no reaction around and the liver the gallbladder does not all, uh, show any any evidence of uh, edema on the walls and there is no evidence of hepatitis so this is a case of residual liver abscess